welcome folks wherever you may be to this online reflection for St Charles Newcastle under Lyme and St Thomas's at Butterton. Today the 26th of December is St Stephen's Day and of all the many saints in the Christian calendar um, I've always especially felt sorry for St Stephen. He was the first Christian martyr. A martyr is somebody who either suffers or dies for their faith. They don't, they don't always die but St Stephen did and he wouldn't be the last by a long chalk of men and women of faith to die for their faith uh, and we perhaps want to think about that today from the comfort of our home, own homes. Many Christians throughout the world are suffering and in some cases dying for their faith. To be the first Christian martyr is surely something worthy of commemorating and yet in the Western world um, his feast day is the day after Christmas Day um, in the UK and a few other countries also known as Boxing Day. So I would guess all except the most hardcore Christians very few people would be likely to uh, attend a festal liturgy uh, in commemoration of Saint Stephen and his sacrifice. In fact I would suppose many people will be going out to the shops for the sales. It's not something I particularly want to do at this time of year uh, and I say that assuming we're not in lockdown when this is broadcast. So let us in this time of reflection do a little justice to Saint Stephen's faithful witness and sacrifice. And let us begin by sitting comfortably wherever you are and knowing, sensing God's comforting presence with you. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And the collect, the special prayer for St. Stephen's Day. Gracious Father, who gave the first martyr Stephen grace to pray for those who took up stones against him, grant that in all our sufferings for the truth we may learn to love even our enemies and to seek forgiveness for those who desire our hurt, looking up to heaven to him who was crucified for us, Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in the unity, one God, now and forever. Amen. As Stephen rebuked God's people for not listening to the word of God, let us now confess our stubbornness and sin which resists the Holy Spirit. You call us to listen to your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You command us to flee from idolatry. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You ask us to forgive our persecutors. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After bearing witness to the High Priest and Council, and the message falling on deaf ears, Stephen declared, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, 
you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The account of the death of the first Christian martyr, the first Christian to suffer or die for their faith. Like Jesus on the cross, part of Stephen's witness was to forgive those who persecuted him. Lord, do not hold this sin against them, he prayed. And one of those who persecuted him, you'll probably notice from the narrative, was a young man called Saul. He held the coats of those who stoned Stephen to death. Nowadays, he would have been found guilty of joint enterprise, whilst not directly involved in the killing of Stephen. He certainly facilitated it. In the story retold throughout the Acts of the Apostles, we come to know Saul as Saint Paul. And some time later, Saul, Paul, had a dramatic conversion on the road to Damascus, a conversion to the Christian faith. And so on this St. Stephen's Day, as we, we think about the event, the account of Stephen's, Stephen being stoned by the crowd, I wonder how much of Stephen's witness, his gracious witness, forgiving those who violently killed him, opened Saul's heart to God. Think about it, how different the history of Christianity would have been if persecutor Saul hadn't become pioneer evangelist Paul. This puts me in mind of how it's been the gracious witness of others forgiving me, loving me, believing in me that have been most instrumental in my journey of faith. And I found this to be true most recently from the ministry team and generally the good folks of St Giles and St Thomas's who have been most encouraging to me in my ministry locally and I thank you all for that and sadly it looks like 2022 will once again be a year of challenges so my prayer on this St Stephen's Day is that we may all continue to be gracious witnesses to the gospel in our dealings with one another. Forgiving, loving and believing in one another. And may God bless us all in those endeavours. Amen.
recalling the gracious witness of Saint Stephen. Let us pray. Full of the Holy Spirit, let us approach the throne of grace and bring our prayers to Jesus, our Lord. Incarnate Lord, you came down to earth from heaven to embrace the pain and sorrows of our sinful world for the cause of truth. And so we pray for all Christians who are persecuted. We pray for all who hold authority over people as political or religious leaders, that they may exercise their power with justice and for the common good. We pray for those who use violence to silence their opponents. We pray for grace to witness to your truth with constancy and faith and to bear the cost of following your righteous ways. We pray for those for whom the joy of this holy season is overshadowed by anxiety, pain, grief or failure. We remember all who have gone before us in faith, looking for the vision of your heavenly glory. And we rejoice in our communion with Stephen and all the saints and martyrs whose hope was in you, the word made flesh, and with whom we forevermore are one. And so, Lord, receive our prayers and perfect them by your heavenly intercession to the glory of the Father. Amen.
before the final blessing, may I offer my best wishes to you and your loved ones for 2022. Whatever may befall us, may we know in our hearts and our homes God's unfailing and eternal love. God, give us grace to be faithful witnesses, to see heaven opened and the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and our loved ones now and in all eternity.